Hi, I'm Bill Woodard. Welcome to the Smith County Chamber Corner. We're at the Smith County Historic Courthouse and we've got a good show for you today. Thank you for tuning in. We've got an awesome show for you today. And uh, I'd just like to say one thing, uh, this is November, it's the month of Thanksgiving. And I would like to say that we're very thankful for all of the chamber members that we have out there and for all of the family members that we have and all of the people that are in the county. This is a wonderful place to live. And folks, if you get a chance, call somebody up and tell them how much you appreciate them and how grateful you are for their presence. We've, we've, like I say, we've got an awesome show for you today and we'd like to start out with something that's really good. We have this young lady that's been doing segments for us for uh, probably the last two years and she does a wonderful job. So I'm gonna turn it over to Miss Grace Harville and Seasoned with Grace. And welcome to another episode of Seasoned with Grace. This month, since the Thanksgiving holidays are quickly approaching, we're going to be making a delicious sweet potato casserole. And to start out, we're going to add two 15 ounce canned sweet potatoes that have been mashed to our bowl. One cup of sugar. one teaspoon of salt, three eggs that I'm just gonna lightly beat together, three tablespoons of butter that's been melted, of milk, and one teaspoon of vanilla. And now we're going to mix this together until it's fully incorporated. This is one of my favorite Thanksgiving side dishes. My Aunt Bonnie normally makes it during the Thanksgiving holidays. And whenever we get together at my grandmother's house, everybody loves it. And by the time the Thanksgiving meals and festivities are over with, the plate that it's in is totally gone of sweet potato casserole. It's so, so good. going to add this to our casserole dish. All right. And now we're going to move on to my personal favorite of the sweet potato casserole, which is the delicious topping that goes on top. And it has one cup of brown sugar, one cup of chopped pecans, and one third cup of flour. And we're just gonna give this a mix. The reason why this is my favorite part, or this is my favorite part of the casserole is because it kind of makes a sweet potato, or not a sweet potato pie, but like a um, pecan pie 
topping and it's very very good especially whenever you scoop it out and you take the first bite of it, it you get kind of a sugary delicious crust and it's so delicious all right now we're going to add our topping to the top of our potatoes You want to make sure that this is evenly distributed on top of your potatoes because I guarantee you, you don't want to miss this topping that goes on top. You can spread it out on top. Alright, and lastly we're going to add three more tablespoons of butter to the top of our casserole just to give it an extra buttery gooey flavor <laughs> all right and now we are going to add our cat or put our casserole in the oven at 300 degrees for 35 minutes So now we're going to get our sweet potato casserole out of the oven. And oh my goodness, it looks fantastic. Look at this. I love how the crust on top gets really caramelized and it just looks so good. I'm gonna let y'all get a quick look at that. It looks fantastic. I'm sure you'll love it at your next Thanksgiving get together. If you would like a copy of the recipe for my sweet potato casserole or any of the recipes that you've seen on Seasoned with Grace, you can go to my Facebook page, Seasoned with Grace. I hope you all have a fantastic Thanksgiving and I hope your day is seasoned with grace. We'll see you next time. All right, this is the Chamber Corner March Through Christmas. I know uh, uh, we've got a lot of things going on in December and, and uh, we wanna let you know what's happening. And so we had a, a special guest come by here. Uh, Brother Frank, uh, introduce yourself and, and tell them uh, kind of what you're here for. Okay, my name's Tim Frank. I'm the pastor at First Baptist Church in Carthage. But today I'm representing the Smith County Help Center and sharing together about the Toy Land, the Santa Shoppers, and also the Angel Tree Program. Okay, well now, uh, if uh, somebody wants to get involved in this, let's say as a donor, uh, how, how do they go about doing that if they wanted to, uh, do, are you like accepting toys or how, how does that part of it work? Okay, well there's three different programs. The uh, Toyland is the uh, Smith County Help Center program and toys can be donated directly to the Smith County Help Center, new toys for that, uh, new items for uh, ages from birth, the preschoolers all the way through high school. And then uh, the Santa Shopper and the uh, uh, Angel Tree are actually programs that are administered financially through other organizations, but the Smith County Help Center receives all the applications. Therefore, you don't have duplication, you don't have a lot of, un, uh, uh, of people having uh, uh, confusion on who's received what. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well now that leads to the next question. Uh, who would be eligible to participate in this program as a recipient of a gift? Uh, people that uh, feel like that they have need, uh, their children won't have any uh, gifts uh, perhaps this Christmas or they need some assistance in helping the children with gifts, uh, they can uh, apply at the Smith County Help Center for uh, just make an application and then through the Help Center uh, their names are given to one of the three different uh, entities that are given the gifts. Okay, and uh, do you, uh, I may be asking you a question you can't answer, but uh, I believe uh, Rotary is one of the entities that's working with this, or am I wrong about that? Um, Digger Point Dester and I believe this, the right. Rotary work together on the Angel Tree program, mm -hmm. and then the Sheriff's Department works together on the Santa, Santa Shop. Shoppers, and then the Help Center directly works with Toyland. Okay. Uh, however, the Help Center, Smith County Help Center, receives all the applications, processes all the applications, and then uh, assigns the people for the different programs so that. Perhaps uh, your child would be in the uh, Help Center Toyland receiving this year, and then next year you would make an application. Instead of being in the same program again, you might be in the Santa Shoppers next mm -hmm. year. And then the next year, maybe you'd be with the uh, uh, Angel Tree program. So trying to coordinate it 
uh, to where everybody gets help through all the different entities. Okay, and, and I like that because uh, I, I know I've been involved in two of the three programs there, and uh, they, they actually uh, treat the children in a different manner. Uh, I know uh, the Santa Shopper program, they actually have them up at the uh, uh, court facility and they bring them down in the patrol cars and, and let them shop. And uh, I know Rotary, they meet them there at the store and they, they shop uh, that at that time. So uh, it, it's a little different experience for these kids each time. I'm not sure how they do the, the uh, toy land, but uh, uh, it's a ex different experience for them each time. Now, so we've covered, uh, if people want to donate, they can, they can contact them there at the Help Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, uh, I know uh, I've seen uh, like the Center Shoppers program, I've, I've had them come in and they've also had donations. So evidently uh, you can also maybe contact the Sheriff's Department or the Rotary Club and make donations to her. Does it all go through the Help Center? The only thing that goes through the Help Center uh, collectively is the application process. The I financial see. process goes through for Toyland through the Help Center, uh, for Santa Shoppers through the Police uh, Sheriff's Department, and then for the Angel Tree program through the Rotary uh, Carthage Rotary Club. Right, mm -hmm. and, I, and I might add just something that, that you might not be aware of. There's an organization called Smith County Living Incorporated, and basically the Santa Shopper uh, program, it runs through that, so the donations go through. So if you're making a donation to the Santa Shopper program, and I'm sure to these other programs, it, it is a, to a 501c3, so, so therefore it would be tax deductible as well. Absolutely, so, through the uh, Help Center or through any of those. Yeah, mm -hmm. because they're a 501c3 as well. Correct. And uh, uh, that, that might be important to you so that you know your donations to go into a viable organization and somebody that's been vetted and and uh, they, they're actually spending all the funds for what they're intended for. I know uh, they keep records uh, with the Santa Shopper program, and uh, since its inception, we can go back and show you where every dime went and uh, how many children were served and, and, and the whole thing. It's, it's pretty phenomenal to see these kids uh, because uh, they, you can tell some of them, if it wasn't for this, they, they wouldn't be getting right. anything or much at all. Yeah. So and I will makes you feel good. Yeah, I will add that uh, all three of the programs really are very uh, generous in their giving. I mean, as the child is a part of any of the three programs, I mean, it is more than just a token present that they would receive. I mean, some of these are very uh, elaborate type of uh, uh, giving and uh, very generous. And so it, it uh, depends a lot on the donations, but it is uh, a great blessing to be a part of it. Well, and, uh, and I know I keep talking about Santa Shopper because that's the one, uh, and Rotary, I'm very familiar with that, but what I think is really neat too is these kids are going around and they're shopping with a sheriff's deputy and they get to see these guys in uniform in a setting other than pulling somebody over, giving them a ticket or something mm -hmm. like this. It puts the human side to them because we've got some really good patrolmen around here that really care about people and uh, I, I know uh, I've been associated with the sheriff departments in a lot of different things, and, and I know these guys, they, they have some guys out there that really care about folks and, and, and want to help them, so this is a good opportunity for them to do that. Same thing with the Rotary Club. You've got these guys, they don't have to be there, they don't have to do this, and, and I know you're in the Rotary uh, uh, at uh, it's Smith County Rotary, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm in the Carthage Rotary, right. and uh, I know the two Rotary Clubs, these people, they don't have to do what they do, they do it because they care. And I think that's very, well, commendable and valuable. Right, and I'd add that the Help Center, whenever they give, um, it's not the children come and pick out the toys. They have the gifts, the parents receive the gifts, and then the parents can take them home, wrap them, put them under the tree, that type of thing. So oh, it's a little wonderful. different on that part of the program. Um, and it gives a different experience for the children. Yeah, and, and they need it to be that way as well. Sure. Sometimes. That's wonderful. Okay, well, Brother Tim, have we covered everything about this? If, 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 you, if you want to donate, uh, you can uh, donate at the uh, uh, Help Center. Mm -hmm, for the toy land. For the toy land, mm -hmm. and uh, the Sheriff's Department for the Santa Shoppers. Right. And you can contact a Rotarian, and they'll get your donation to them if you want to do that. If you want to receive a gift, you go make application at the Help Center, and that's the center point for that. Exactly, I would say that the Help Center is open 10 to 4, Monday through Friday, and, uh, um, excuse me, 9 to 4, and then 10 to 1 on uh, Saturday, and uh, they can make application through December the 4th, okay. December the 4th. 
All right, and uh, I, you, I don't remember the number up there. I don't know if you remember the number, but you can look it up or you can call the chamber, 615-735-2093, and we'll give you the number to the help center. Well, right there it is right, right there. Here it is. It's 735-8090, and uh, just hit extension one, and then they'll get you to the right person. Brother Tim, thank you for being here. All right, thank you very much. All right. Okay, we're marching through December, and uh, we have another special guest with us here. Uh, Alexis, tell them who you are and who you're with. Um, my name's Alexis Gregory, and I'm here representing the Candy Bar. Okay, the Candy Bar on Main Street in Carthage. Yes, it's on Main Street right beside the Cozy Cabin. Okay, now uh, I know you brought some stuff with mm -hmm. you. Uh, these folks can see it. These are some beautiful arrangements here. Uh, do you have stuff like this on display? Yes, we have. We can do um, custom arrangement orders, or a lot of times you can just come in the store and uh, buy some. They're pre-made, and you can just buy one that way. Okay, so they can order them if they want to. Can they kind of tell you, like for instance, if I like uh, uh, Kit Kats. Or, yes, so, you, you know. just let us know. You can give us a budget, what kind of candy you want in it, what you want it to say, what you want it to look like, and we can make it for you anyway. You okay, want. well, you, you mentioned budget. Uh, uh, is there a price range uh, that you know of? Um, it, ju it really depends on like how much candy's in it, um, what kind of candy's in it. Like, for instance, uh, this one has, you know, full-size candy, some minis, um, and some decorations, too. So this one's $14.95, and uh, this has a cute little scary crow decoration on the top and some malt balls inside the jar and it's um, $16.95. Okay and you've got all kinds of these now. Uh, mm -hmm. The candy bar does a lot more than just uh, arrangements. Oh right? for sure yes. What, what else do you have? Um, we have pretty much anything sweet you could um, ask for. We have ice cream, we have milkshakes, we have lattes, cappuccinos, espresso. Uh, we offer cookies now um, that the cold weathers came. We uh, we left snow cones behind and we brought in an oven to make cookies, but snow cones will be back for summer. Um, we have any kind of candy you can think of. Of course, we have the arrangements. We have bulk candy, um, hot fudge sundaes, hot chocolate, hot tea, hot apple cider. The okay. works. So. All right. And, and I know when there's a special event going on, like for instance, uh, we're having our basically open house November uh, the 25th. Uh, mm -hmm. That's on a Sunday afternoon. And I, I'm hoping that you guys will be open that day oh, and, yes. well, and, and serving. Mm -hmm. Right now we're not open on Sundays, but like uh, the Veterans Day Parade, for example, we'll want to be open. Which is coming weekend. Yes, we'll want to be open uh, then. And if there's a big event like that, we try to be open. Okay. All right. Uh, may you want to tell folks the hours of the store and the days yeah, that you are so, open? so um, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're open from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Wednesday, it's 11 a.m. to 7 p.m and Saturday, 9.30 a.m. till 6 p.m. Okay, and uh, it's located on Main Street in, in uh, Carthage, mm -hmm. of course. Um, what, uh, is there a phone number, a uh, Facebook page, or any of that? Yes. Tell um, us about that. We have an Instagram, it's the underscore candy bar underscore 10, I believe. Just look up the candy bar and it should pop up. Same for Facebook, the candy bar. And the phone number, oh gosh, I'm bad and don't know it off the top of my head. It's 615-489-9244. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, is there anything we're missing that you can think of? I, I know it's a great shop. Now, you can come and, and uh, sit down. I think you have a Oh, yeah. We have there. tables inside and outside. So. Oh, and Wi-Fi. <laughs> one, one thing. Uh, I noticed that sometimes uh, you do special events that are related to school. Uh, uh, yeah, we do um, report card day is a really big one we do. So um, on report card day, if your kid brings in their report card, they'll get a free cotton candy. Okay. Do it, mm -hmm. What if I have all C's? It's okay, as long as you tried your best. <laughs> okay. All right. So so I can still get to <laughs> yeah. something. Okay. Yes. Well, that as is. As long as you tried is, your very best. It's that okay. is wonderful. Now, uh, uh, is this full-time job or are you in school? What's going on with you personally? Um, yeah. So I'm a student at Tennessee Tech right now, and I work at the candy bar Monday Tuesday and went yeah Monday Tuesday and Wednesday 11 to 4 and for the next few weeks or so I'm actually working on Thursdays too okay. so Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday so it's part time but I love it and it's a good like if we're not busy or something I can clean and um, make stuff and when I get done with that I can read my micro book or something okay <laughs> so, so it's, so it's, good. A, it's a good gift yes. for, for being in school yes. then. so yes. if, if somebody's in school that might be a good place yeah, for, you to for check. sure yes see, see what, okay well we, we thank you for coming by oh thank you for having me all right um 
I brought you a cookie. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Folks, I'll tell Freshly you what. Freshly made. <laughs> and, and this is this is one of those made today. Yes, We're gonna I have just to made it before that. I came here. Oh wow. You need to go to the candy bar. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is Chris Hicks with uh, UT Extension here in Smith County along with my coworker Katie Martin. Appreciate uh, you guys uh, allowing us to be on the chamber taping today. Absolutely. So Chris, what are people calling about these days? What's the big issue we need to talk about? Well, this time of year, and it, it happens every year, we expect it in October, November, people start calling about uh, invasive pests coming in the house, and we talk about occasional invaders, those uh, insects that come maybe once or twice a year, and they're kind of predictable as far as when they come. And there's really three that we, we deal with a lot. Uh, the box elder bug, the stink bug, and the multicolored Asian lady beetle, or we'll just call it the ladybug for short, even though there's several different ones. That's the specific one that we deal with. And uh, the first two, the box elder bug and the, the stink bug, they're, they really have no redeeming qualities, okay? They're, they're pests uh, and, and really don't give us a lot of benefit out in nature. Mm -hmm. The ladybug, of course, does give us some nice benefits. They were actually brought over here from Asia to control aphids. So they do have a, a place in the garden. They have a place in nature controlling it bad insects, those aphids, but their place is not my living room. And unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately we get those calls from, from people who have them on the outside of the house, have them inside the house, and the other two as well. And uh, you know, the first question people ask is, well, what do I spray? What do I spray around the house? What do I spray inside? And really I like to focus more on how do we exclude them? How do we right. keep them out? And uh, we've got some publications available at the UT Extension mm -hmm. office, also online at smith.tennessee.edu that will help you if you have the, these occasional invaders uh, give you some ideas about how to pest proof your home and just a, a few tips that, that come to mind is uh, weatherproofing, weather stripping around the doors, uh, door sweeps on the doors, uh, caulking around the windows and, and you can check and see, walk around the house and see where are those entry mm -hmm. points. If you are, are inside and it's a nice sunshiny day if you see daylight coming through the door, it's probably not a good thing. Right. Uh, if you check after dark, you go outside, have the lights on inside, and you can see daylight through the door, well, they only need about an eighth of an inch to get to get in the house, and so uh, that's a problem. So they've got to be coming in somewhere, right. and we've got to figure out where they're coming in and try to use caulking or weather stripping or something, mesh screen. Uh, you think about dryer vents. I think about uh, where utility lines might be going in the house, and can we... Uh, use some expandable foam or some type of material. And again, we've got extension publications that go uh, into great detail and give uh, advice and ideas. Uh, once they are inside the home, I don't really like to spray in the house. I've got mm -hmm. three, three small children. I don't like to spray insecticides or foggers, things like that, because even if I kill them, I'm gonna have to vacuum them up anyway. So mm -hmm. to me, trapping, and we've got a, a, an inexpensive trap uh, that, 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 that I brought today and we'll show that uh, just a water bottle that you cut the top off of and uh, let those insects fall in. If you kind of wipe it across the wall, they'll actually fall in that mm -hmm. soapy water, put soapy water in it and they'll fall in. They can't get back out and they'll drown in that soapy water. Or you can take a vacuum cleaner and vacuum those things up. Again, even if you kill them with an insecticide, you're still going to have right. to vacuum them. So really no need in using an insecticide inside. Uh, if you want to use an insecticide on the outside as sort of a perimeter, uh, I would recommend doing that along with the exclusion. I wouldn't mm -hmm. just use an insecticide. I'd try the exclusion as well, but we can make recommendations on, on insecticides that folks can use to, to supplement our efforts to exclude those, those critters. Very good. So you can help with any preventative measures and uh, some other measures you can take to prevent those pests from getting yeah. inside of the house. We've got a lot of ideas on traps and uh, and different methods to, to control those those insects and, and again like we said pest proofing. Now that, that's one of the things that people are calling me about. Mm -hmm. I know you've had a lot of things. You've been very busy the last uh, few weeks getting ready for what was a really successful yeah. event that we had over the weekend. Yes, myself and our other co-worker Mary put together a barn sale, our first annual Riverside barn sale. It served as our main fundraiser this year for our 4-H and our FCS program. So uh, it was definitely a learning experience, but I think for the first time it turned out very well. We had nearly 300 people attend, over 30 vendors. Um, we raised a good amount of money to have successful 4-H and FCS programs this year. So we were super excited about it. And we of course want to say thank you to everybody who helped to make that possible. The vendors, musicians, folks that helped decorate 
and of course all those who came out to support. So if you enjoyed it, tell a friend. We are going to try to have an uh, event next year. So watch out for details for that because we are excited to make it bigger and better um, each and every year. And the thing that stood out to me is a first class event, but also not only did it raise money for 4-H, mm -hmm. Family Consumer Science Program, it really showcased about 30 different vendors from most of them here in Smith yeah. County, but also some other Upper Kimberlin vendors. Absolutely. And I think that's a really great thing as far as economic development to, to showcase those vendors Absolutely. that we have in the area. Especially this time of the year, you know, starting to get thinking about Christmas. So we had some great opportunities to shop small and shop local. So that's what we want to provide along with a great fundraising event. Sure. And, and I know we, it, it, 4-H is just getting started, still kind of kicking off mm -hmm. in the school year. So you've got clubs going on and I some do. fun activities. One of my most favorite activities uh, going on this month in clubs. Mine too. So it's November, which if you are a 4-H'er to you, that means speech month. Uh, for some of our 4-H members, this is a super exciting time and they love competing and trying to move on to the county and sub-regional and regional and even state level. For some of our other 4-H'ers, it might be a time that they're feeling a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious to get up in front of their class and share their speech. But we know that the communication, the life skills that they are learning are going to stick with them long after their years in 4-H. So we think it's a great opportunity for these 4-H'ers to share some of their public speaking skills. So if you have a 4-H'er um, in 4-H clubs in the schools, we will be doing that throughout the whole month of November. December 11th is going to be our county public speaking contest. So if you have a 4-H member that places first or second in their classroom, they'll be invited to go to the county contest. And we would definitely encourage you to uh, try to persuade them to give their speech again and compete again at the next level. And I know our, our teachers do a great job helping support our efforts yes. in public speaking. Their time is very limited, so I mm -hmm. think you coming in and, and teaching public speaking and having these contests, that helps them too. Absolutely. It does meet a state standard, so hopefully we're helping the teachers out a little bit, and they definitely help us out by promoting it and either requiring it for a grade or giving some extra credit for it, and of course helping the kids as they try to write and practice giving their speech as well. Yeah. And you've got some kids out there that are going to be participating in another event as far as reading to children yeah. this, this month? Yeah, another way that we're getting uh, involved in some of the younger grades, of course 4-H mainly starts in fourth grade, but this month we're going to be participating in Ag Literacy Week. And so for Ag Literacy Week, we're going to be reading some age-appropriate, age accurate agriculture books to some first and second graders. So some of our older 4-H members will get to teach these kiddos a little bit more about agriculture, about where their food comes from, and maybe get them excited to be 4-H'ers themselves one day. And that's something that's really special to me because yeah. I think teaching our kids where food comes from and what our farmers do, that's really important. So I think that's a great thing. Absolutely. Well, if you guys have any questions about anything that's going on in 4-H in or agriculture, family consumer science, mm -hmm. please give us a call at 615-735-735. 2900 or stop by the local UT Extension office and uh, visit us. Buongiorno, greetings. I'm Chef Esther from Tuscany in Tennessee. The holidays are upon us once again. We invite you to come visit us and have a delectable personalized private dining experience in our new Trattorius and dining porch. Reserve your holiday parties. Come for a special birthday or anniversary dinner or you can come stay with us in one of our two rooms, the Piccolo and the Grande, for a quiet, relaxing, peaceful country getaway that offers a touch of old world Italy. It's rustic ele elegance at its finest. It's cheap on the hillside, vineyards on the hill, and magnificent views. Relax in our 24-hour saltwater hot tub or upgrade to our private saltwater hot tub and courtyard area. We are very pet friendly and we have many parks, hiking, falls, boating, fishing and wineries nearby. We are just 50 minutes from downtown Nashville. Please visit our website, TuscanyInTennessee.com for menus and dining information and information on rooms and reservations on Airbnb and more. Happy Thanksgiving, Bon Natale, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Feliz Navidad, Happy Kwanzaa, and Happy New Year's. Ciao.
Okay, I know it's new November, but we're still marching through Christmas here, and, <laughs> and uh, these guys here are from the Sheriff's Department. Uh, gentlemen, uh, would you introduce yourself? Sheriff, why don't you start? I'm Steve Hopper. All right. Eugene Roberts. All right, and these gentlemen here, they run a program in Smith County that I think is pretty phenomenal. I know uh, what little we're able to do with it. We do a little bit of the banking for you, but uh, it's called Santa Shoppers, and uh, I, I want you all to uh, kind of tell us a little bit about that. Uh, first off, uh, when, when do you do it? This year, uh, it will be December the 18th over at the uh, uh, facility, our new facility over at the sheriff's office on the court side. Uh, we're going to start about 4 o'clock in the afternoon and gathering in and we'll have our uh, goodies over there, pizza and let the kids start coming in. Santa will be there and we'll have our tree up. And, but it will be December the 18th this year. Okay, and I, I know it's, uh, uh, Sheriff, it's, it's one of those times when uh, they, uh, kids get to see an officer in uniform doing something really nice. I, I'm sure it you is. enjoy that. It is. I th everybody enjoys it. Everybody there, you can see the smiles, not only on the kids' faces, but all the officers and that come to participate. In, it's, it's not only the sheriff's office, the uh, other agencies uh, come over and help participate and take the kids and uh, you got the Carthage Police Department, South Carthage Police Department, Gornsville Police Department, and we also usually have some troopers with the Tennessee Highway Patrol that come and help. And TWRA. And TWRA, that's right. But uh, not only that, I mean our, our staff, they pitch in and help and, and just do a tremendous job and it's, it's a wonderful night. Yeah, well, I know I, I got to attend, uh, I believe it was last year that I was up there, and, and uh, it, it is really great to see in the courthouse all those little kids laughing and, and talking and having fun, and, yeah. and the parents, they, they seem to really like it, too. So uh, you, you got an entire group of people there. Now, am I right? Do you uh, take them to shop from there? Is that right? Is that we, we actually, our officers come in and... Uh, all our officers, it's all it's it's voluntary from every department. Only the only officers that get paid are the ones that actually are working that night. Mm -hmm. And yes, we uh, we load them up nine years old and over can ride in a police car and we'll actually turn the blue lights on and a siren. <laughs> I bet they love that. They they get a real treat out of that. So do we. And it's uh it's a sight to see going down. Uh, the bypass toward Walmart at our final destina destination where we wind up at Walmart. Yeah, and I know the folks at Walmart, they support you in this and uh, let you run through the cash register there. The folks at Walmart, are uh, d they're really good to us. We, we have our own checkout line, our own checkout area. They, uh, they also contribute to the cause along with many other folks. Yes, we're very fortunate to be teamed up with Walmart. Yeah, they're, they're a good community supporter. Uh, in fact, folks, if you see a Mr. Nick Burnley down there, he's the manager, uh, let him know that you saw this and that you appreciate what they do. They Better supported uh, uh, one of our festivals here not long ago, and, and they're, they're, they're involved in a lot of things in the community, yeah. and, and it's much appreciated, Mr. Nick. The, uh, uh, the, the Help Center, we, we team with the Help Center and they put a lot of work into this also mm -hmm. and need to be recognized for that along with the chamber and we certainly do appreciate what you do we appreciate what everybody does we we get a little nervous about this time of the year because trying to get our money out and you know this is our fifth year of doing this it's yeah. unbelievable yeah. we started out with 28 kids last year we had a 151 Wow. So we get a little bit nervous about yeah. the money, yeah. you know, coming in this year, but it's already started. We appreciate from the bottom of our heart everybody that uh, that contributes to this cause. And we've actually been in Walmart. I personally have and have had folks that walk up to me and hand me money and say, hey, we want to help you, help you do this. It's a, it's a really good thing, and we're fortunate to have a sheriff that... Uh, that allows us to do such things and, and give back to the community. And, and what you said a minute ago, giving those kids the opportunity to interact with law enforcement officers in such a positive way uh, means a lot to them, their families, and to us, particularly to us. 
Well, I, I, I just think it's a wonderful program, and uh, I know uh, I got a thrill out of just watching all yeah. the, the things that go on. And I, and I got to say before we stop here in just a second that uh, Miss Beth Davis is not here today, and I tell you, she's the coordinator of all this, and and uh, she's uh, actually gone down to the hospital, but uh, she couldn't be here. But we sure do. We recognize all our folks, but she is one of the. Uh, main organizers and oh, getting this no, done. No doubt about it. Beth, we're going to talk about you a little bit. She uh, uh, she was one of the ones that helped get this started, I believe, and uh, I know it yes, was the sheriff's idea, and, and all of you came up with this, and uh, I, I really appreciate you all thinking about the community in this way, because uh, I, I know there's children out there that if it wasn't for this, I might possibly not get anything, or it wouldn't be much, and I know I've seen a lot of good stuff come out of there. All the money that is donated goes to the children. 100%. Yeah. If you give $25, $25 goes for a child. Right. Okay. Now, you mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, you were concerned about every year. You want to make sure you have raised enough money for the kids. How do they give you money? Let's say if I want to donate to you and I'm not around close, how do I get the money to you? You can actually uh, bring it straight to the sheriff's office. We'll we'll take it there, uh, or you can donate it through the chamber of commerce. Mm -hmm. That's typically how we recommend it to be done. It all filters down to the chamber of commerce, and you guys uh, put it in a bank for us and keep an account for us. And then at the end of the day, when we check out, you're actually the folks that that pay that bill for us or help us pay that bill. We don't keep any of the money. We don't handle any of the money, but it's filtered that way through the chamber. Okay, and I, I might add, if uh, you uh, do give a check, uh, you can make it out to the Smith County uh, Santa Shoppers, mm -hmm. and it's put into the Smith County Living Incorporated account, which is a 501c3 charitable donation, and uh, that is tax deductible as well. And so uh, it, it is a good thing for everybody involved. Well, gentlemen, I, I don't know. Have what's, I, what's, yes, sir. What's the address down there? For oh, the address. Chamber. If, if you want to mail it to the chamber, it's 939 Upper Ferry Road, Carthage, Tennessee, 37030. And uh, you can just make it out to Santa's Shoppers, and we'll know what to do with it. Right. 939 Upper Ferry Road, Carthage, Tennessee, 37030. And uh, it covers all the children in Smith County from the north, very first north. Right to the very south, to east and west. Every child in Smith County that is in need and, and is turned into this program, they right. can participate right. in this. 15 and under. 15 and under, okay. Right. So I'm not eligible. I'm you're six, not eligible. You're out. 16, you're out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right, well gentlemen, thank you for coming. Thank Appreciate you. Well, let me say one more thing, Bill. Yes, sir. Now that all the elections are over, and uh, all this money some of the, the people have left in their campaign account, <laughs> Be a good time to donate. Be a good time to donate. Right. 501 C three. This is a charitable contribution. You can make your donations of some of that if you want to. Yeah, that's right. And you know, you're not going to be running. I don't know who. If you think about it, it's probably two years for anybody to run. So uh, you don't want that old money sitting that's in your right. campaign account for two years. Get mold donate all over. Some of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Thank you a lot. Appreciate thank you. Being thank you. Appreciate. Right. It. See thank you. All right. Take care. Twas the week before Christmas, and all through the courthouse, every creature was stirring, probably even the court mouse. The presents were sitting on the table with care, with all the kids waiting for them right there. Those kids were so excited with seeing the Christmas red. Really cool. Fun. I feel very excited. I actually do. Um, yeah. The visions of shopping with a cop danced in their heads. The cops were excited too. Don't get me wrong. It means so. It means a lot to me. There's so many different things that, that you can put into perspective. It, uh, to see the smiles on the children's face when they're getting to shop. To explain their proud program. Uh, this program uh, came about a few years ago when we realized that we wanted to give back. So we have created this program over the course of several years. And not only do we provide um, a shopping experience for them, but also a mentor type program so the officers can uh, get to know the kids in the community better. 
and then get in their patrol cars to start along with the kids to Walmart. When out on that trip, there arose such a clatter, people sprang from their shopping carts to see what was the matter. Looking out the car windows, the kids' eyes flashed. The cops then opened the doors, and away inside, they all dashed. When what to their wondering eye should appear? Toys galore for those little dears. The kids, most of which had a wish list. I want a fairy wand. A laptop. Converse isn't a phone. Um, I don't know. Um, it depends on what it is. I mean, if it's like a toy, I'm going to play with it. But if it's like something useful, like something important, I'm going to play with it. A laptop. Got the presents they wanted. Oh, sweet bliss. Then all of them exited Walmart and they had to go. A fun time for all with presents to show. And when they said their goodbyes and drove out of sight, they made sure to say, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Reporting in Carthage, J.R. Smith, Smith County Insider. Okay, we're marching through December in November. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what we're talking about here is there's a lot of things that can happen at all the way through de de November, November into and December. December. Yep. And uh, of course, David, David, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm David Anderson with Gramps Travel, and this is the perfect time as the weather gets cold to think about Alaska. You're kidding. This <laughs> time of year you go to Alaska? Well, no, you think about it. You think it. about you think going about to Alaska. Oh, I up. see. Yeah, it, yeah. Because you can save money. You can save money lots of money. If okay. you wait till spring, the prices go higher. Yeah, because everybody else is thinking yeah, about it. Everybody else is thinking about it. Yeah. So there's this deal that Princess has right now. Starts at eleven forty nine per person. And if you sign up this month, you get a hundred to two hundred dollars of on board credit. You get a free stateroom upgrade and you get free gratuities. And as you know gratuities can add up. They Ninety four sure fifty for a per person for a seven day cruise. So it's real easy to sign up. All you got to do is just give me a jangle at 615-828-2960 and I can get you booked and uh, get you on this cruise. And, and I will have to say, uh, we went on a cruise this last summer, mm -hmm. uh, me and my family, mm -hmm. and we went to Alaska. And I have to say, it was one of the best trips mm -hmm. I've been on. Uh, I, you hesitate to say ever, but it was, <laughs> it might have been ever. This is the same ship, and interestingly enough, after you were on it, they took it to dry dock and rebuilt it. Oh, really? So it's like a new ship. So I missed the rebuild. And I spent $8 million on it, yeah. Well, and, and, and you know the funny part, uh, I didn't see anything broke when I was on there. I don't know what they did, but it's like a new ship now. Yeah, well, that, that is great. And uh, we went to uh, Juneau and Skagway uh -huh. and uh, Victoria. Victoria and Victoria, B.C., yeah. Uh -huh. and that was quite a good trip. And then, uh, of course, we went up to the, uh, uh, well, the ice yeah, Glacier Bay. Glacier Bay. Glacier I couldn't Bay. get it to come yeah. out. Yeah, we yeah. went to Glacier Bay, and that that was quite good. Saw seals and uh, uh -huh. uh, whales and and all kinds yeah. of wildlife, and uh, rode the uh, the train ride up into the, the, train, the park. Yeah, yeah. Alaska Railroad. Yeah, 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 yeah. rode that. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. uh, that's that's quite a trip, folks. If you want to have some uh, good memories and and have a good trip and get treated like a king or queen, <laughs> whichever one you want. <laughs> These guys will do that, won't yep, they? Yep, princess will do it for Okay, them. well now, if they want to do this, how do they get in touch with you? 615-828-2960, or my email address is gramps underscore travel at yahoo.com. Okay, and I, and I want to say one thing. Uh, you call some people and they book travel for you, and uh, you know, they basically go, here's your ticket. And then you get there, and you got to make arrangements to get to the oh, here to there and everything. Oh, yeah. With with uh, uh, David here, you don't have to do that. You uh, you you basically got everything covered. You get your we walked you get your we walked off of here. the plane, got on our transportation that was already arranged. Yep. Yep. Got onto the ship. Uh, when we got on the ship, we had uh, uh, book tours already booked, already booked, and we got off and got and went to the tours, and, and we just, it was a basically trouble-free, worry-free trip. And That's so, where a so travel agent can really help you out, and it doesn't cost any more. 
Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the My one. Services thing. are free. Not that, the cruise. <laughs> right. The, the cruise is not free. I, but but if you call and make the arrangements yourself, it's going to cost you the same thing as it does that's for right. you to go through David. Mm -hmm. And so it, it it really doesn't make sense to not use a professional like David to take him iron out all those wrinkles. Iron out the kinks. Yeah. Yep. Because uh, I, I'll have to say that was a worry-free and wrinkle-free trip that we went on. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. And I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you. I'm really glad you appreciate it. All right. David, thank you. And uh, you, you do other things, too. They can go other places like oh, Disney World. Yeah. Or? I have a lot of clients go to Disney World, and I have a lot of people go to resorts in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I bet that would be a good time this time of year, wouldn't well, it? Well, the Caribbean is great in January and February. Mm -hmm. Temperature's just perfect. You can still go scuba diving and everything, but it's not so blasted hot. Yeah, well, uh, back several years ago, back uh, uh, many <clears throat> years ago, my wife and I, we did a trip, and we left like the day after Christmas, mm -hmm. and we came back. We were supposed to come back, uh, and, and she was going to have to miss a day of school. <laughs> well, they had like a 12-inch snow here, <laughs> and so she didn't miss any so school. And, yeah, we were in the Caribbean. Uh, it, was, it was wonderful. Any bathing suit, I, 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 did, I really felt bad for everybody up here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, David, thank you a lot. Oh, you're welcome. All right, folks, Gramps Travel, call them. We're here with uh, Mayor Jeff Mason, and uh, he's been very gracious to allow us to come into his office. It's uh, November, Mayor, and so uh, uh, normally people ask you questions like this on, on your first 100 days, but uh, I guess you've been in about 60 plus days. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, 68, something like okay. that. Okay, how, how are things going? You, you just it's great. Uh, I love my job every day. Uh, there's not a better feeling than getting up every morning knowing I'm going to in to serve the people of the greatest county in the state. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things that we can't really talk about right now, but coming forward, you know, that we're working on. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a humbling experience. Uh, they told us in orientation as a mayor that they told a story of, of the new mayor asking, what do I do my first day? And his uh, county attorney told him, said, uh, just sit right still, it'll find you. And uh, he called a commissioner and he said, just sit right still, it'll find you. And he, I think somewhere around lunch, he called his county attorney back and said, never mind, I see what you mean. And, and it does. It, there's, ne there's never a minute that you don't have something you need to be doing, but that's okay. Uh, the days go by really fast. Uh, I've had an opportunity to go to a couple of conferences and, and, and meet some of the people throughout the state and some of my peers, and that's been a, been a great thing. Uh, you and I spent some time with our manufacturers in the county and talking to those guys about, uh, you know, uh, our message to those guys were that we're always recruiting new business, but we also want to be able to uh, sit down with our people that are here and been here a long time and uh, see what we can do to help those guys. Uh, got our second county court commission meeting coming up uh, next Tuesday, which is always exciting because we, then we get to talk about the things that are coming up. Uh, we kind of set a goal and I told Stacy yesterday that uh, we may never do it again, but we did get county commission packets out a week in advance and uh, it's something I want to try to do and, and, and continue to do and, and, and because you know it's, it's unfair to our county commissioners to give them a packet on Friday and they'd be prepared for a meeting on Monday. So uh, we've, we've really took a hard look at that and trying to do better with that. And we've also started each county commissioner has an email address now, so we're emailing them to them. They have the option of going to email or they can come by and still pick up a printing copy. So just one of the things we've looked at and kind of changing and kind of, you know, it, the Mayor Nesbitt did a wonderful job for the last 16 years. And uh, we get a chance to come in and improve upon and look about things we can do better than he's done. It's kind of like the, like uh, Bill Lee said last night, it's, uh, it's a, to follow a, successful person is a lot easier than come in when there's a mess. So yeah. I, I'm a blessed man for that reason right there. Exactly. Uh, well, you know, we all uh, don't realize it, but we stand on the shoulders of the ones that came before us. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is a Thanksgiving time, Mayor. Uh, you want to just say something to, about the Thanksgiving holiday? And Thanksgiving is one of the most important holidays we have. Uh, I get kind of frustrated. We were talking about this weekend. You know, we rolled out a Halloween last week, and I want to say congratulations to both of you. I mean, you, you both had had a uh, hand in the trick or, trunk or treat on the square here in Carthage, had a great turnout, even with the rainy weather. And then 
Colby and the guys over in Gornsville put on a heck of a deal over there. They had said somewhere in the 7800. So it, it was exciting to uh, get to see both communities come out and, 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 and have an opportunity for kids. Halloween has changed a lot since I was a young little boy, but, uh, but you know, society now, we go right from Halloween to Christmas and we, we forget the most thing because we're, we, we're, a, we are so blessed in this nation. I mean, we have our differences in the, the media and the news and politicians tell you how far apart we are, but we're not. We're, we're a blessed, blessed county, blessed nation, blessed state. Uh, so we really need to take those time to come together with family and be thankful for what we have. There's, there's so many things, I mean, and I, I'm, I'm an optimist and try to be at all times, uh, you know, you could get negative about what's going on around, but, you, but it don't take you long to figure out that we're blessed. And I know, I know I am. I'm blessed to be, blessed to be a Christian because God sent his son for me. I'm blessed to have the family I have. I'm blessed to be in this position. I'm a blessed man to be able to be the leader of Smith County today. And that's, uh, I never, you know, it's a big, that's, that's something great to be. And, but uh, if I could ask you all to just take a little time and look around and count your blessings and count them again and spend that time with your family and friends and Christmas will be here when it gets here, but let's let's not forget about Thanksgiving and what it means. I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, Mayor, thank you for letting us come into your office. Thank y'all. It's always good to talk to you guys and, and kind of talk to the talk to the citizens through this. So, thank you. All right. And happy Thanksgiving, Smith County. Well, Katie, I think we had a pretty good show today. Uh, had a lot of folks come by. I know I appreciated you and Chris coming Absolutely. by. Absolutely. Um, I understand Rotary has got something. Uh, by the way, folks, we're going to tell you a few things, a highlight of, of what's going on in the mm -hmm. county just here at the last. So if you want to catch this uh, stuff and maybe just remember it, uh, this is what mark this it on is your for. Calendar. Yeah, mark it on the calendar. And uh, Rotary's doing something. You want to tell them they about that? They are. This sounds really cool. So this is the first time they've done this but they are gonna have a pocket knife for sale. They're $40 each, 35 if you buy two or more, and it has the Smith County Courthouse etched on the box and the knife. So as they continue this tradition, they'll have other historical landmarks each year. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these knives from Smith County Noon Rotary, you can get in touch with Colby McKinney. His phone number is 615-489-0572, or you can check out the Facebook page for more information. Okay, and these are one of those collectible things that you can Absolutely. hand down from generation to generation. For sure. Okay, uh, uh, jumping to November the 16th, uh, Terry Lynn Weaver, the state representative, is gonna have a coffee conversations with the District 40 and uh, she'll be at the Chamber of Commerce at 8 a.m. on Friday, November the 16th. Now she does this every month. I'm not sure she'll do it in December, mm -hmm. but uh, she does this every month. So if you've got something you need to talk to your state representative about, that is a good time to show up because she's there to listen and she'll want to hear what you have to say. Absolutely. We also have the Veterans Day Parade coming up. So it's going to be Sunday, November 11th at 2.30. Uh, the parade route is going to follow Main Street. So come out, support our veterans, and make sure you catch the Veterans Day Parade. Okay, and while that's going on, the Smith County Public Library in Carthage is going to have their open house on Sunday, November the 11th from 1 to 3. I also know that uh, several of our uh, uh, flower shops are going to be open for an early open house at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know Sheila's on Main Street. Uh, that'd be a good place for you to go. She is a great lady, and she got a lot of good stuff down Absolutely. there. And that's Sunday, November the 11th from 1 to 3. And, of course, the Veterans Parade's going on, so uh, you might want to uh, kind of get here a little early. So mm -hmm. the, the parade, we'll be telling you. Well, we already told mm -hmm. you about that. It starts at, uh, start lining up at 2. So another parade we've got going on, Gordonsville Christmas Parade, is going to be Saturday, December the 1st. You can call Stacy Beller at Gordonsville City Hall for more information. That phone number is 615-683-8282. Okay, so if you want to be involved in the Gordonsville Parade, you call that number. In historic Granville, Tennessee, they're doing a 1950s country Christmas, and it opens on November the 9th, and it runs through December the 29th. So you've got plenty of time to go over there and visit these folks and see it. Uh, they have a festival of trees at the exhibition center and then they've got a 1950 antique toy show. So if you want to hear more about that or, or need more information, you can call 
4151 or visit GranvilleTN.com for more information on everything that's going on there at Granville. And this December, they have the Christmas Dinner Theater with performances by the Sutton Store Players and the Christmas Bluegrass Shows. That's each Saturday night. So uh, there's a lot of stuff going on at Granville if you want to go over there. Absolutely. Sheila's Main Street Florist, located at 902 Main Street, and River's Edge Antiques, located at 216 Main Street, will also be having open houses on November 11th, so that day of the Veterans Day Parade. Theirs is going to be noon until 4, so make sure you visit those businesses and enjoy their open house. Okay, and, and don't forget uh, also the uh, Sanders Family Christmas Play is going on at the Smith County Courthouse. Mm -hmm. It starts the week before the end of November. Uh, and it goes through the second week of December. Uh, you can call the chamber 615-735-2093 if you want to get exact show times, or you can just call Smith County Drugs and uh, go ahead and get your tickets. I would advise you to call now because I know they've already sold a third of the seats uh, that are av totally available, and so it'd be a good time for you to call. And it's Sanders Family Christmas, and uh, those are weekend shows Friday, and Saturday, and uh, I think you really enjoy that. These guys, uh, Mr. Bill Reese, they put a good show on, so uh, go and enjoy that. Absolutely. If you are ready to get started on your Christmas shopping, some great shopping can be found in historic Granville. So make sure you visit the Sutton General Store, Granville Gifts, and Granville Antiques and Gifts if you're looking to do a little bit of shopping this season. Okay, and toward the end of this month, the Carthage Lions Club Christmas Parade, and the Smith County Chamber of Commerce helps them do, with this. It's on no, Sunday, November the 25th at 4.30 p.m. Now, we're having an open house from 1 p.m. until then. We're also going to have a Christmas tree lighting there. We'll have vendors here on the square. And then uh, we've got uh, uh, Williamson Branch is coming, and they're going to be playing prior to the parade. They were here last year. They're an entertainment group out of Nashville, Tennessee, and they do an outstanding job. And if you've never seen them perform, you, need, you owe it to yourself to come and hear them. Uh, they usually play to very large venues, and, and uh, there's usually a ticketed price. This is a free event that's being put on by the Smith County Chamber of Commerce and the sponsors. Uh, this year, DTC Communications is sponsoring, and uh, we've got several other sponsors. We'll have a, a plaque up letting you know who they are and mentioning them during the, the uh, event. But uh, you need to come to Hometown Christmas November the 25th from about 2 o'clock until about uh, 4.30, and then, of course, the parade starts. And then when the parade culminates here, right here in front of the courthouse, Santa Claus is going to get out, and he's going to come inside and sit down in the, uh, his chair here, and the kids are going to come in, and they're going to be, be able to sit in Santa Claus' lap and tell him what they want for Christmas. So uh, it's going to be a big night, and uh, we're, we're expecting a fairly big crowd for that. Uh, the Christmas parade always draws a lot of people. If you want to do a float in the parade, just call the Smith County Chamber of Commerce, 735-2093, and uh, let us know that you're going to be involved. What it costs you to be in the parade is a toy to donate to the children's uh, uh, fund or children's uh, giveaway in the Christmas tree. So if you want to be in the parade, that's all it takes for you to be involved in that. The lineup is down at the uh, what we call the old Robert Shaw uh, I guess uh, where the building mm -hmm. used to be, but it's right in front of Save-A-Lot and Ace Hardware down there. Uh, it, it's right across the street from there. So if you can find Save-A-Lot and Ace Hardware, which are two wonderful chamber members, then right across the street, that's where the lineup for the parade is. And they're going to start lining up sometime after 2 o'clock. They'll have the gate unlocked, and you can get in there and uh, get your float dressed up and get ready to go. And at 4.30, they're going to leave 4.30 sharp from there and then come all the way downtown in front of the courthouse here, and uh, there's going to be a, a very good parade. So we hope that you'll come to that. And if you want to mark your calendars for January the 7th, there is going to be a Red Cross blood drive uh, at the Chamber of Commerce. So if you are interested in giving blood, supporting that great cause, January 7th at the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. And folks, uh, we, we hope this has been an informative show for you. We try to give you things that are happening here in the local area. If you want to know anything about 4-H, call Katie. Absolutely. At 
615-735-2900 or stop by the extension office. Okay, and if you want to know anything about bugs, plants, weeds, crops, anything like that, you call Chris. Same Hicks. number. Same number. And if you want to know anything about events or things that's going on, call us at the Chamber of Commerce, 615-735-2093. We hope you have a blessed day and thank you for watching the Chamber Corner.